Uh, so in your packet, page 38, we did the uh, the top of the page, and so we'll continue. But let me uh, let me recap uh, what we did from the top from the top. Uh, I like this chart here. It tells us uh, quickly uh, which quadrant or which um, uh, sign to expect from each of the trig functions. So the A means everything in the first quadrant is going to be positive, right? So all six trig functions are positive. Second quadrant, S means that only sine and its related trig function is positive. Everything else is negative, right? So sine is positive, cosecant is positive, but everything else, tangent, cotangent, they're both negative in the second quadrant. Okay. P means tangent is positive in the third quadrant, which means that sine and cosine will be negative in the third quadrant. Right. Okay. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, which means that sine and tangent are negative. So basically, if you don't see that letter in that quadrant, that means those trig functions are negative. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, second, third, and fourth quadrant, each quadrant, there's only two functions, two trig functions that are positive, and then the other four are negative, right? Two positive, four negative, two positive, four negative. And uh, we were able to uh, go through and uh, do process of elimination to uh, eliminate two quadrants at a time and then figure out what that last one is. So let's look at number nine here. Uh, first state the quadrant or axis where the terminal side of the theta is found, then find the exact value of the specified uh, trig function using the different information. So uh, we're going to be drawing triangles for each of these, uh, but it's helpful having that ASTC there um, for us to continue, continually remind ourselves uh, quickly which quadrant we're dealing with. Okay, so for number nine, it says find cosine of theta if cosine of theta equals one half and tangent is less than zero. Okay, so sine is positive, but tangent is negative. So sine is positive, that means we are dealing with first and second quadrant, right? Sine is only positive first and second quadrant, but tangent is negative. So which quadrant would that be where sine is positive but tangent is negative? Second quadrant, right? Because it can't be A. A is all, but S means only sine is positive. Everything else is negative. So quadrant two. What we're going to do is you're going to draw a triangle in quadrant two and use Pythagorean theorem to find missing side and then find cosine. So. Go ahead and draw a triangle in quadrant two. Remember, every triangle that you draw has to have an, the x axis as one of your signs. Okay, so never draw a triangle involving the y axis. So here, I'll draw it this way. And then your theta is always right at your uh, in, involving the origin. Okay, never put theta elsewhere. So sine is one half. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, remember, your hypotenuse is always positive, and the only uh, negatives you could have is along the x and or the y. Okay, but sine is just a positive one, right? Which we're, we're in the first quadrant, second quadrant. Okay, so how can I find um, the adjacent side? Okay, put that here. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, the hypotenuse is always by itself. Subtract one from both sides. A squared equals three, so A equals root three. So once we have root three, now what adjustments do we have, do we have to make? This is in the second quadrant, right? So we're going left root three, so therefore this should be what? Negative, negative root three. So we do we do want to make the uh, appropriate adjustments because we're going left root three and then we're going up one to reach this order pair. So now cosine, what's cosine going to be then? Negative root three or two. Negative. That's consistent with what we know about second quadrant, right? Second quadrant, only sine is positive. We expect cosine to be negative. That process makes sense. Can you go over one more time? Negative quadrant. Good. So quadrant two. So 
it says sine is positive and tangent is negative. So where's the only quadrant that sine is positive but tangent is negative? Same, Same quadrant. So that's how we know based off of this information where to draw the triangle. Okay. And then I know that if I want to, you always want to think about you're just trying to reach that point. So to reach that point, I got to go negative or three and up one. So that's why this is negative, this is positive. Hypotenuse is always positive. All right, let's try number 10. Everybody good with, with nine? All right, find tangent of theta if cosine is negative and sine is negative. So where's the only quadrant where cosine is negative and sine is negative? Quadrant three, yeah, quadrant three, right? Because quadrant three, tangent is the only one positive, which is going to force sine and cosine to be negative. So quadrant three. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to draw a triangle in quadrant three. Make sure that your triangle involves the x-axis. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Yes, question. Does that mean one side of the triangle has to be on it? That's right, that's right, yeah. One side of your triangle has to be the x-axis. So what you don't want to do is, you don't want to, you never want to draw this. This is going to be incorrect. This is going to throw, throw your answer off. So you never want to draw it this way. Yeah, never draw a triangle involving the y-axis. You're your one of your sides has to touch the x-axis. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so caution three. Um, we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, so uh, cosine is negative root two. Hypotenuse is always positive. And then Pythagorean theorem define your third missing side. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, anytime you get uh, a value, you have to make the appropriate adjustment based off of which quadrant you're in, right? Because you got to think in terms of, am I going left and down? Am I going, uh, you know, uh, right and up? I have to think of these as, am I in a negative region? If I'm in a negative region, I have to make sure that I um, insert a negative. So it makes sense, right? Any order pair in the third quadrant is going to be a negative x and negative y. So tangent of theta, what's the Tokotoa? What's tangent of theta? Opposite over adjacent. So negative root 2 over negative root 2, and that reduces to be what? To be 1. You guys want to try um, 11 and 12, and then I will walk through the steps with you after you guys have a chance to try it to see where. All right, let's think about this here. Secant is undefined. You know secant is related to cosine. So we know undefined is if our x value um, has a zero, right? Because I know I can't flip zero. So zero over one, if I flip that, I get one over zero. I get one over zero here. So 
these are the two places where secant is going to have issues, right? Is where the cosine um, flipped is going to give us something that's undefined. So we're dealing with these two. But this tells us that cosecant is negative. So cosecant is related to what? The x or the y? Why? Because cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So which order pair are we talking about? The 0, 1 or the 0, negative 1? We're talking about the zero negative one, right? So this is not this is really not in the quadrant. So we call this this is really in the negative y axis. So we know that we're, we've narrowed it down to this location here. What is sine going to be for this order pair? Sine of theta will be yep, negative one. So this is an instance where we don't have to draw a triangle because um, it's it's lined up in one of the quadrants uh, order pairs. Okay, any questions with eleven? How do you know what undefined means? Undefined means something divided by zero. So the only place where I'm going to be dividing by zero is if it's in one of these four quadrants. You know, one of these four order pairs, right? Because every other order pair, there's no zero. So. I know it's one of these four quadrants, and it says secant is undefined. Secant <laughs> talking is related to the x, or is it related to the y? Secant is the reciprocal of what? Cosine, so it's related to the x. So where's the only places where there's an x value of zero? Yeah, y axis, good. So we're down to these two options, because these are the places where secant is undefined. But it says that cosecant is negative. Is cosecant related to the sine or the cosine? Sine. Sine is the y value, right? Yeah. So the only place where cos where the y value is negative is down here, right? There's no so we can eliminate this one and we're down to this option here. Cosine is undefined, cosecant is negative. Okay, number 12. Uh, find cotangent of theta if secant is equal to two. All right, so secant is related to cosine. So basically, cosine is positive, and then we know cosecant is related to sine. So where is cosine positive and sine negative? Question four: cosine positive, sine negative. All right, so secant, Sokotoa, what is, uh, what's the relationship for secant? Well, that's cosine, right? Oh. Cosine is opposite over hypotenuse, therefore secant is hypotenuse over opposite. Now, how can I write secant as a fraction? Two over one. So we know secant is two over one. Two is the hypotenuse and one is the adjacent. Right. Does, everybody, does everything make sense here, right? Fourth quadrant, ratio, populate two of the sides, and the Pythagorean theorem can find that third side for you. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Solve for B. Now, I'm getting a positive root three. I have to make an adjustment here, though. I'm going left and down. So this must be what? A negative. Okay, so now that I have everything filled in, it gets a lot easier here. Cotangent to theta. What's the relationship for cotangents? Adjacent over opposite. So one or <laughs> negative one over root three. Multiply top bottom by the uh, conjugates. Let's see if we can finish off this page, okay? Uh, cosecant by cosecant, if tangent is 
root three and secant is greater than zero. So I want a positive tangent and positive cosine. Positive tangent, positive cosine. Quadrant one, right? That's the only place I'm going to get positive tangent and positive cosine, right? Every place else, I'm, I'm not going to get that to line up. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. If I can't see a fraction, I can always involve a one in the denominator. Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now that we have our triangle filled out, what's cosecant's relationship? Hypotenuse over opposite. Yep, two over root three. We got to do some cleanup here, though. All right, so continue working through. Uh, I will um, kind of work, go through each of the problems, but I want you guys to try it, and I'll, uh, you can always look up on the board to kind of follow along, or if you want to check your answer. So go ahead and try 14 through 17. Uh, for, for, for this one here, for this. okay. So it says, so I, I like to think in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent because the the uh, reciprocals feels uh, less clear. So secant is related to, oh, sorry. Um, so I have information from these two, right? So cotangent is related to what? Tangent. Tangent. So tangent is negative, right? So I'll put that sign there. Correct. And sine is positive. So which quadrant will give me sine positive? But tangent is negative. You don't know. So um, the A means all the trig functions are positive. S means only sine is positive. So if sine is positive, what does that mean about the other trig functions? They're negative. They're negative. So S means sine is positive, but the P and C are not in this quadrant. So that means tangent and cosine are both negative here. And then what does T mean? That's right. Tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are negative. And this fourth quadrant means cosine is positive, sine and tangent are negative. So which quadrant will sine be positive, but tangent be negative? And, co and tangent is negative. Uh, well, quadrant four. Uh, cosine is positive, and then sine and tangent are both negative. So try again. Where is sine positive, 
but tangent negative. Or we, or we can do one thing at a time. Um, where's the where's the only place where sine is positive? And quadrant oh, yeah. one, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to cover these up because I know that I know that I can't deal with anything other than the first and second quadrant. Now I'm down to these two. So then, which between these two, where is tangent going to be negative? Same quadrant. So that's how I know that. Same quadrant. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so once we have quadrant two, that's where you know where to draw your triangle. Cotangent is um, what's the relationship for cotangent? Opposite. Which is what in terms of in, in terms of Sokotoa. Adjacent of opposite. So at, you can always force a one if you don't see a fraction. So adjacent over opposite. So you know you want the negative one to be adjacent. Opposite is the one. The Pythagorean theorem will get you that missing side. T squared. Secant. So now that we have our three sides filled in for our triangle, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Right, hypotenuse over adjacent. Okay, let's do one last one, and then you guys can we can finish up. Okay, and we'll we'll finish the rest of this tomorrow. Okay, so 15. Find secant and cosecant if tangent is negative and cosine is negative. So where is tangent going to be negative? It's either second or fourth, right? We know that we're down to two options where tangent is negative. And then between these two, we can use this to help you know uh, decide which option it is. So between quadrant two and four, where is cosine going to be negative? Quadrant two. So there we know quadrant two. Okay. Let's go ahead and label the sides here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, how do I know that the negative goes to the three and not with the four? Because it's not very clear here, right? So how do I know to have the negative three here, not and not negative four here. Because I'm going left and up, right? So left three, that's negative, and up four, that's positive. So that's why I know second quadrant. That's right. Uh, yeah, I like to think in terms of more. Um, if I want to get to this this location, uh, what will be the order pair at that point? It will be negative three comma four. And the Pythagorean theorem: a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Secant is therefore um, hypotenuse over adjacent. And cosecant is hypotenuse over, over opposite. Okay, we'll finish this tomorrow. We'll do quiz review. Wait, and now, uh, and now. Uh, Try to get back your inner circle tomorrow. Okay, come on, let's get your phones. We're going to have a test review also. Test review on Thursday. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay.